man here. I just got a brand new used 30, 3080 for 300 bucks, and I wanted to take this opportunity to show you the first things you should do when buying a used GPU to protect yourself and to make sure it works. So the first thing you should do is, and this is optional, but it definitely helps. You should probably film yourself opening it just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it or that there's, um, you know, that you actually have the product in there. Uh, you know, it's not a perfect thing to do, but it's definitely better to do to do it than not to do it. Uh, so let me film myself opening it with one hand. Uh, I have a folding phone and it makes it really hard to put it on a mount or anything. Otherwise, I would have um, put this on a stand to do that with. Anyway, this is me opening it for the first time. I have not opened this previous to this video. I wanted you guys to see me do it. All right, so obviously it's a good sign. It's always good when all the original packaging is in there. All right, so it comes with the original cables, which I don't plan on using. All right, it is in an anti-static bag. You should always ship your GPUs in one of these if you can. It's just common courtesy. I very much believe in etiquette when buying and selling used parts. So this is me pulling it out for the very first time. Okay, um, everything, I'm just doing a quick inspection. You know, you might want to try to look at the screws just to see if there was any wear and tear on them. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but I don't notice any. Everything looks good. Uh, if there's labels on this, if there's stickers on the screws too, that helps. That means you know somebody did not go in it. He said he didn't go in it. Um, he said this card wasn't used for mining. I believed him. So, so far, so good. It definitely doesn't look like it was. Not that it matters. I'm just, it's just one thing to note. Um, all right, so the condition of this card looks good. Let's go ahead and get it in my test bench. Actually, one other thing I wanted to point out. You, uh, you just want to look and make sure there's no damage on the PCIe or anything like that as well. And everything does look pretty clear. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the test bench now. All right, so we've got this plugged into my test bench. My testing area is currently a mess, so I apologize if you see that. Um, I would recommend that if you like to mess around with PCs, if you like to buy them, if you like to do anything with parts, if you like to build them on the regular, I would have a test bench. It can range from anything like this, which has a very good X570 motherboard, uh, a pretty good CPU cooler, a 5600X. This is basically like a really solid computer. Like <laughs> This is the same gaming computer that I use uh, in my... Uh, in another location, and I would use this as a gaming computer. So you could have a test bench that ranges from something like this all the way to something like this, which is basically just a old uh, HP office computer that uh, I was about to get thrown out and I took it. I swapped out the stinky power supply for a 450 that I paid $10 for. And yeah, that's what I use. And it literally has a 128 gig SSD somewhere in here, which I don't even know where it went. Oh, right here that I paid uh, $10 for, so this bench cost me 20 bucks. So as long as you have any kind of test bench, this will, a DDR3 motherboard will work just fine as long as it has PCIe, uh, you know, the latest PCIe lane, which is fine. All right, so let's fire this on. Okay, the lights are blinking. That happens with Zotac sometimes. The LED lights are blinking, which is weird, but I'm definitely getting a post, so it works just fine. All right, so I just need to run some tests. That now the LEDs are not working. Uh, now I've seen that before in other Zotac cards, so I'm not I'm not worried yet. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just double check Device Manager. I want to make sure that it reads the graphics card and it's showing it, so that's a good sign. All right, so as you guys can see, I started up Cyberpunk. Um, Still no LEDs. I just did some quick Googling, what I recommend you would do. And it looks like it's just a problem with Zotac itself. And honestly, for what I paid, um, if the LEDs don't work, I'm okay with it. There is a fix. It looks like there's a workaround. I honestly don't think I care that much. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run this thing through a benchmark. Basically where I just take this thing on Cyberpunk through the highest settings with ray tracing off that I think it can handle. And I'm gonna run the benchmark and I will be right back as soon as it's done. Okay, and it ran the benchmark good. I'm gonna up the resolution real quick. I think I ran it at 1080. Okay, now I'm just gonna up the resolution to 4K. I'm gonna push this thing as hard as I can. 
and I'm gonna run it. All right, everything worked just fine. So I think now what I wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and run Eugene, ha Eugene Haven, and I'm gonna run this probably for about 20 minutes, see how it goes, and I will be right back as soon as it's finished. So it's been running for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes now, pretty stable. Uh, it's about 63C, the fan's a little hot. As you can see right down there and you can hear it. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do now is, and I'm gonna run GPU-Z. Now the reason you wanna do this is it shows you the max memory clock and the max graphics clock in the corner. Whether you get there is a different story on Haven. So now what I'm doing is I have tech power up on because I want to run this for a little bit now. And I want to see, I want to monitor the memory temperature, the GPU temperature, the hot spot temperature. And then I want to run the boost clock and the memory clock. And I want to see what they're getting. And then what we'll do is we'll just compare it to uh, tech power up online and just make sure we have a good card. Because, you know, sometimes you can have issues that pop up or... It looks like it's running at a good clock frequency and then it's not and then there could be more issues with the card. So this is us just double checking and triple checking and quadruple checking to make sure that there are no issues. And I actually have to update <laughs> apparently the drivers and GPU-Z which I will update after this test. So I'm going to leave this on for, I don't know, maybe another 20 minutes and uh, I'll just keep monitoring this as I'm doing other work. So I kind of lost track of time. It's literally been an hour everything's running great but do notice that the the boost and the uh, base clock or the memory clock are different than GPU Z um, it's okay but that's why you want to have both up so anyway uh, this GPU works really well now like I said the RGB does not work um, now if that bothers you then you would want to try to get it fixed and there is a way to get these fixed if you just Google it um, I don't care I care about the GPU performance and I've got the fans at about 75, but I am pushing this thing pretty hard. Uh, and that's fine, especially if I'm using this for gaming. Uh, as far as mining, this, this is honestly probably fine too. So like I said, I paid $300 for this. Um, RGB that is glitching, which is common for Zotac apparently, does not bother me. And I'm going to call this one done. But like I said, if that would, be, if that would bother you, you would message the seller. And you would, um, you know, you have your PayPal buyer or eBay buyer's protection to enforce it. Anyway, like I said, if this was $300, I think it was a great buy. It actually just makes the RTX 4060 Ti look even worse <laughs> when you consider that I bought a 3080 for $300. Anyway, guys, this is what you want to do when you buy a GPU to confirm that it's working and to confirm that you got a good product. Um, you want to do all the steps I went over. You want to check it for cosmetic damage. You want to, um, you want to inspect the PCB and everything. You want to make sure it's not opened. Or it could have been opened, which is fine. You just want to ask the seller if they opened it. Um, you know, honesty is key here. And, you know, also your comfort level with GPUs as well. Uh, you know, if you were a newer bot, uh, you know, someone who doesn't know much about PCs, you probably want one that wasn't opened up. But, you know, I would argue for the price, anything is okay. But again, it's all about your tolerance level. And then you want to put it in a test bench or even your PC. You want to boot it. But when you boot it, I would recommend, you know, I run Cyberpunk 77 because it's one of the most demanding games out there. If you don't have that, Unigine Haven is free, and you want to run GPU-Z, which is also free. You want to run them both at the same time. And again, you want to go to a site like techpowerup.com. I'll show it right over here. And you want to compare your results for your boost clock, your memory clock, and everything to what they show to make sure you have a good GPU. And you want to look for like red bars like this that shows complete stability. This is a very, very stable GPU. And uh, actually, the GPU clock is, is actually pretty impressive. I hate to give Zotec props after all the problems I've had with 3070s. But anyway, guys, um, this is this is it. Uh, I feel comfortable with this. We're going to call this one a good GPU. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what to do. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments down below. And I hope this all helped. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Crew man out.